friends! Today's project is something that I'm really excited about. It's one of those weird Victorian jackets called a dolman. I think they're absolutely fabulous. And if you've ever been getting ready for an event and you're going to have to head out into cold weather and you're thinking, oh, I wish I could put my coat on, but if I do, I will crush my sleeve ruffles. This is the solution to your problem because the signature feature of a dolman is that it has a very wide hanging sleeve which is sometimes but not always attached to the jacket, so it can also look very much like a wrap that's very shaped to fit around your arms very gracefully. They're amazing, and I, I need one. I just need one. <laughs> I'd also like to give a shout out to Roisin, who made a really generous tip on Kofi, which helped make this project possible. In case you didn't know, and you probably didn't because I've literally never remembered to mention it, I have a Kofi page, so if you feel so inclined, the link for that is down in the description. Alright, so to get started, I will be using the Fashions of the Gilded Age book, and they have some really good dolman patterns in here. So I'm going to try to use the apportioning scale method to try to make one of these happen. I've never tried this before. But I think I found the scale that is the correct size for my bust measurement. I copied it out a couple of times, so I have a me size measuring tape. I don't know what I'd do with this, but I'm going to try to figure it out even though this whole method looks utterly bonkers. Hopefully it makes sense and I will get a pattern. We'll see. <laughs> to start with, I'm going to use this pattern for a dolman for evening from 1883. And this uses the apportioning scale drafting method. And it looks like this will give me the most basic dolman shape. And from there I can decide what changes I want to make style-wise or fit-wise. And hopefully this scale method works because I've never tried this. <laughs> To begin, I'm using a plastic ruler to mark a straight line along the side of my paper. I then mark out the height of the pattern piece using the apportioning scale ruler so that I know I won't run off the edge of my paper later. I usually start drafting a pattern a little away from the paper edge so I have some extra room if I need to make changes later. I then mark down from my top line all the points that fall on the same line on my pattern diagram. These points show me where I need to draw the horizontal lines on the diagram. Next, I'm using a plastic ruler to mark perpendicular lines at each point. This gives me a nice straight line to measure across with my apportioning scale ruler, so that I can mark my horizontal points to start forming the other side of my pattern piece. Now that you have all of your points marked, it's time to play Connect the Dots. Using the diagram as a reference, I drew lines between each point to form my pattern shape. It was really fun seeing my pattern piece materialize out of nowhere so quickly. On the top left side of the pattern, I needed a curved line. To get this, the diagram shows to draw a straight line between your marked points, and then measure a distance from the middle of your line. I was able to use this to mark my curved line using a French curve, connecting my two original dots to the one I just marked in the middle. I also used my French curve to draw in the neckline at the very top. Lastly, I labeled each corner of my pattern with the corresponding letter on my diagram. I'll be able to use these later to figure out which pattern pieces line up where with each other. 
I then did the same process with the front and sleeve pieces to complete the pattern. I am shocked at how easy this was. Like, it took no time at all once I figured out what the heck I was supposed to be doing with it. And it just went so fast. It's basically regular flat patterning, but they've done all of the math work for you. It's just, this is amazing. This is the only way I'm making Victorian dresses from now on. Like, I, I love this. I'm really excited to check if it fits first, but oh my goodness, this is awesome. <laughs> I cut these pieces out as is and sewed them into a mock-up. It fits pretty well right off the bat, surprisingly. I still want to make some changes, but this is a great base to start with. So I've decided after fitting, I think that this will look a little more elegant with this pleating detail to add a little more fullness in the back, so I'm going to add that into my pattern. I'm also going to extend that front point so it comes down a little more like this one does. I also want to figure out if I can make little tassel-y things for the back like this. I think those are so cool. And I'm also starting to think about trim, and I'd love to do a fur-lined edge like on this one with a tassel fringe. And I have some fur left over from a previous project, and I want to try uh, crocheting some fringe from another pattern in this book. We'll see. The mock-up version 2 is looking pretty good, and you can see the difference between the original pattern and the new changes. It looks much better over a larger bustle, or a pillow pinned to your butt if you can't seem to find it. So I copied all the changes from the fitting onto my pattern, and you can really see how much bigger we got from the original piece to the new piece with the pleating and the extra length. But I haven't really changed it too much, just made it a little bigger. So I went fabric shopping in the garment district on my way home from work, and I found both the fabrics I'll be needing for this project. I've got a lovely black wool for the main part of the dolman, and I also have this beautiful creamy satin for the lining. Nothing feels more luxurious than a fancy lining, don't you think? And I also have left over from a previous project a whole bunch of fake fur that I'm going to use to trim the outside edges because I just want this to look like the coziest thing in the world. Step one, create a great black void on your floor. Step two, trace out your pattern pieces onto the void. I'm taking extra care to mark all of my notches for pleats and matching seams. I also marked my seam allowance around my pattern tracing as my pattern draft did not include seam allowance. I'm adding one inch around every piece. After cutting out all of my pieces in the black wool, I did the same process with the lining fabric, again being sure to mark all of my notches and seam allowance. Before doing anything else, I marked all of my notches with pink thread. Wool is notorious for losing all markings the moment you turn your back, so I wanted to be sure that I wouldn't lose them. I then assembled my pieces, sewing the front and back pieces just at the shoulders, and then attaching the sleeves in between. At the side back, I used my thread notches to pin my pleats. I sewed the pleats down first before attaching to the back piece so that they would be easier to manage.
got the basic body of the dolmen together and we have our nice long curvy sleeve and our little pleats in the back and next we're going to put together the lining and start working on trim now that i know the shape is good i went ahead and did the same process with the lining pieces Okay, so because my fur trim is yardage, not long strips, I've traced out the edges of all my pattern pieces and I'm going to cut out shaped pieces and try to sew them together into a long strip that's exactly the shape of the edge of my dolman. Hopefully this works out. We'll see. Okay, fur trim update. I decided to divide the front piece trim into two because this is just going to waste so much of this fabric so if i can put this down here and this over here that saves me so much space and it just means one more seam so whatever when cutting fur it's really helpful to take your time and try to only cut through the fabric backing rather than just chopping through the whole piece this will help to minimize the fur fuzzies flying off your pieces after all my pieces are cut i am ready to assemble my trim i like laying out pieces on the floor so i can be sure i'm attaching things in the correct order I also periodically stopped throughout all of my steps involving fur to sweep my floor because in spite of my best efforts, I was still drowning in little fuzzies. After seaming all of my pieces together, I carefully trimmed the excess fur in the seam allowance. This is rather tedious, but very worth it. Just look at the difference and you can see how much flatter my seams will lay without all of that extra bulk. To start attaching my trim, I laid it out over the edges of the dolman and machine basted it in place in the seam allowance. This will keep the trim where I want it when I go to attach my lining. I did a little preemptive trimming in the seam allowance to make lining attachment easier, but I was careful not to trim too close to my stitch line. After all that, I folded down the top edge of the fur and pinned it, checking with a ruler that I was keeping it at a consistent width. I then whip stitched the top of the fur to the wool, being careful to catch the fabric backing each time and not just the fur bits. I didn't worry about what my stitching looked like from the inside, as I'll be fully lining the dolman and no one will see it. Once the fur was firmly in place, I pinned the lining on and bagged it out so that every edge but the neckline would be finished off. Before trimming anything, I pulled the fabric right side out and carefully checked each seam with a pin to pull out any fur fibers that got caught in the seam. I know this looks incredibly tedious, but it really helped to give me a full looking edge and a very polished look. Otherwise, I may have had unevenly trimmed fur bits along my seams, which I didn't want. I then turned it back inside out and trimmed any remaining fur in the seam allowance away. Okay, now it's right side out for good. I did a quick tack just through the seam allowance on each seam a few inches above the hem. This will keep the lining from ever sagging out below the hemline if it ever stretches a little over time. For the last bit of fur, I cut a straight rectangle the length of my neckline and machine sewed it on. Then I trimmed the excess seam allowance fur as before and sewed the other side down by hand. <sighs> Finally done with fur. Looks like I murdered a Muppet in here. And other news. I've discovered that there is really nothing more luxurious feeling than a fancy cream satin lining inside of your beautiful coat. Highly recommend. Somehow this just feels fancier than just plain black. I don't know why. Cream makes it fancy. Tell me what you think. <laughs> 
All right, now for tassel trims. I was super excited to try this authentic Victorian crochet pattern after learning to crochet last year. You start by cutting a number of pieces to be the fringe part, fold them in half, and then crochet three rings around to keep them secure. I had to use a really teeny hook to make these. Happily, they came out exactly like the diagram in the book. I ended up making six tassels, which each took me about a half an hour to make. To make the little appliques for the back, I crocheted lengths of thread and used a pattern for a Celtic knot bracelet to weave them into a pretty design. This took a lot of brain cells and a couple of tries to get right, but by using a foam board and pins to keep everything in place, I was able to get there eventually. I found it easiest to weave the knot shape first over my pattern, and then go back and zhuzh everything into a more even shape. After I was happy with my design, I carefully pinned and stitched each intersection with cotton thread to secure everything in place. Lastly, I used a large tapestry needle to knot two tassels onto the end of each applique piece. I used the tail left from the starting chain on each tassel and went through a couple of times to make sure it's secure. I'm very happy with how these came out, especially since I had no luck finding appliques I liked online that were in my budget. I spent about $6 for the ball of crochet thread instead, which is great. Next, I pinned these in place on the back of the dolman. In my inspiration photo, the appliques were over the pleated back section, so that's where I've decided to place them. After checking that they were even with each other, I then hand sewed them in place, being careful not to catch my lining fabric underneath. Lastly, I sewed a ribbon waist tape into the center back. On one of the patterns in the book, I read that dolmens often had a waist tape so that they would sit snug to your lower back and show off your waist, while still having room in the front to drape loosely. After fitting, I found this to be quite helpful in achieving the elegant style I was looking for. I also finished the front with large hook and eye closures, and now she's done! I'm immensely happy with how this project turned out, and I really enjoyed trying a new, more authentic way of patterning. Part of what I love about historical sewing is feeling a connection to the women who came before me, who would have made and worn these clothes in the exact same way I'm doing now. 
I'm also quite pleased to have a new cozy item of winter wear in the closet that I will certainly be making use of, even with my ordinary wardrobe. If you enjoyed following along on this project with me, consider sticking around to see what else I get up to by subscribing. Thanks for watching!